there's a marker. Ha ha. Okay, um, so I talked about static friction. Um, now I'm going to look at kinetic friction. So the model that we can use for kinetic friction says the following. The frictional force equals, we use the K, times the normal force. So if I have two surfaces rubbing against each other, um, relative to each other, then the frictional force is constant. And it doesn't depend on how fast it's going. It doesn't depend on the surface area. It only depends on the types of material and how hard they're pushed together. Typically, the co typically the kinetic friction constant is smaller than the static friction constant for the same two material. Okay, so let's just go ahead and look at a case. Uh, what we're going to do is determine the kinetic friction um, by looking at a cart on a on an incline. So let's say I have this ramp inclined at an angle theta above the horizon. And let's say I push the block, the cart, so it starts moving up the ramp. But it's going to slow down. So it's going to have gravity, a normal force, just like before. But in this case, the question is, which way is the frictional force? Well, this is just the magnitude of the friction force. The direction is always in such a way as to make the two rubbing surfaces try to not rub and move relative to each other. So in this case, it's moving that way. Friction wants to stop that. So the frictional force would be this way. Okay. Um, let me just go ahead and do Newton's second law uh, for this case of going up. We're actually going to have the block, the cart, go up and down the track. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call this my x-axis and this my y. In this case, it does, it makes it a lot easier to do it this way than this way because the acceleration is in this direction. If you put the x-axis like this, you're going to have an acceleration in the x direction and the y direction, and it's going to make your life more no fun. So uh, Newton's second law in the y direction, f net y equals m a y equals zero. So what force do I have? Well, this is that same trick I had before, that same theta. So in the y direction, I have n minus mg cosine theta equals zero. And so I can solve for n. n equals mg cosine theta. Now, and here's where I said before, you know, people make the mistake. Oh, the normal force is the weight. It's not. Okay. The normal force is not the weight. Sometimes it happens to be that, but in this case it's not. Okay. Now let's look at the x direction. Okay, so in this case, what forces do I have? A is not zero. What forces do I have? I have the frictional force in the negative x direction. And then part of the gravitational force. Here's uh, the y component and the x component. So that's going to be the sine minus mg sine theta equals negative m, I'll just call it a, because acceleration is that way. And the acceleration is some uh, value. Okay, But I'll call this uh, a1 for acceleration going up the plane. And I'm going to call that a positive uh, value. Uh, so I can substitute for the frictional force, negative mu k n minus mg sine theta equals negative m a1. And then n I can put in this, so I get negative mu k mg cosine theta minus mg sine theta equals negative m a1. The masses all cancel. And I get, and I can, I can factor out which I'll let you do. But I get a one equals um, going to be mu k g. Well, I can write this as this. Yeah, that's fine. Mu k g cosine theta plus g sine theta. The mass, the mass cancels. Did I say that? I may have mass cancels. Okay. 
Uh, this has the right units, right? Sine theta has no units. G has units of acceleration. Mu has no units, so we're okay. Okay, now what if the block is coming down the plane? What changes? And this is the cool thing. Does the normal force change? No. Does gravity change? No. But the friction force does. Because now I have the friction force goes this way. Because if the block's sliding this way, it wants it to stop sliding. Like, stop that. Okay. So it's going to act that way. And that's what's cool about a block going up and down a plane with friction is that the acceleration up and down is going to be different. On the way up, the acceleration is going to be greater than just gravity because friction is helping it. On the way down, the acceleration is going to be less than gravity. So we could do the exact same problem. Um, this is the same. This is the only different thing. That's going to be a positive value plus f. And this is going to be, um, it's still accelerating that way, right? And that's going to be uh, A2 now. And so that's going to be plus, that's going to be plus, and it's going to be minus, and it's going to be A2. I, I didn't work it out because I don't like my videos to get too long. But me even saying videos getting too long makes the videos longer, so it's kind of self defeating. Okay, let me rewrite A1 because we need both of them. A1 equals, I had mu k g cosine theta plus g sine theta. So what we're going to do is um, find the difference in acceleration. Okay, let, let me just draw a quick sketch of what this would look like. Let's say I have, that's the positive direction. Let, let me look at velocity first. Velocity as a function of time in the x direction. So it starts off with a positive velocity, it slows down, and then it, it speeds back up, coming back down. So it starts up here with some velocity, it slows down, okay? And the slope of this equals a1. Well, it's negative, we raise it up. And then afterwards, it's coming back down, it stops right there, comes back down, it's going to do this. It's not going to have the same slope because it has a different acceleration. It's going to have, oh wait, did I do that backwards? No, that's right. It's going to have less acceleration on the way down because they're working differently. So I can measure A1 and A2 by the slopes of these two lines. And then by taking the difference in these two, if I take A2, let's do A1 minus A2, I get um, mu k times this, so I get two of those, 2 g cosine theta, because I have a negative and a positive, this minus that one. And these two terms cancel. So I get mu k equals a1 minus a2 over 2 g cosine theta. And you'll see this has no units right here. Um, let me write it up here for you. Mu k equals a1 minus a2, 2 g cosine theta. Um, the top has units of acceleration, and so does the bottom. So mu k has no units, which is the way it's supposed to be. So this is what we're going to do in the in the lab. Um, it's kind of easier to see where the acceleration changes if you plot velocity versus time. If you plotted the acceleration versus time, um, it would look like I'm going to have to draw this. Um, no, that'd be backwards. It'd be a parabola that doesn't look quite right. So it'd be kind of maybe like that. And this would have a different acceleration than that. So it's a little bit easier to do with velocity. OK. Oh, the, the important thing, people always say, well, it doesn't matter how fast you push it up this thing. No, it doesn't. You can try, and you should try it if you're not sure. But the acceleration doesn't depend on the velocity. So, OK.